Harbor Lloyd's boat bobs up and down in the open ocean. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep the swell, so. She's about a mile west of Mission Beach. La Jolla lies to the north, Point Loma to the south. This is the um, Yukon, and it is an artificial reef that's about the size of a football field. So that's a, quite a bit of distance. Most divers only dive about half of it. The San Diego Oceans Foundation spent $250,000 15 years ago to bring the warship here. It was cleaned up and sunk in about 130 feet of water. She's diving on this day with Michael Baer, an experienced diver and underwater photographer. With cameras rolling, they'll be adding to a growing database of information. Lloyd says the current tugs on divers on the first plunge. But it's usually a short swim to the anchored descent line. The journey is straight down from there. And so you'll go from this really clear water, you think, oh my God, this is going to be the most amazing dive, and sometimes it is. Um, and then all of a sudden you go into the stark green murky water. The idea is to record how sea life is doing on the hard surfaces, the nooks and the crannies of the ship. Lloyd says it takes a minute or two after the descent for the eyes to adjust. Then you start seeing, and especially if you have lights, you see these, these little riots of color, right? So they could be the strawberry anemones and they're brilliant or the white anemones. There's a couple different species of these white um, anemones that show up. And so you'll have greens and pinks and whites and browns and rusts. And that's quite a change over 15 years. Michael Baer worked with the crew that cleaned up the warship before it sank. He was also among the early divers. In the first few months, you don't notice that much, but the remarkable difference comes a year or two down the road when you haven't dived it in a while and you dive it and all of a sudden you're noticing uh, sea life where there was not sea life before. And that's the truly remarkable difference. Bear wants to help document the change that's happened since then. The ongoing citizen science survey allows recreational divers to share their underwater photography. The video and photos will be collected and curated. So you definitely are going to notice differences over time and that's part of the purpose of the study is to scientifically track which species are leaving and which are coming in. And some of those species are more than a bit surprising. A diver recently captured on film something that isn't common in these cool ocean waters. It's called a salp chain. It's a gelatinous colony animal that drifts with the currents. And they just happen to be on the Yukon as they were photographing something else. And this salp chain kind of sort of photo bombed the photo and they got a photograph of the salp chain so now we have that species logged in our database. One reason the Yukon attracts such a variety of different plants and animals is that the ship stands in stark contrast to the sandy ocean floor. Here's a kelp strand that actually fell on the ground. Scripps Institution of Oceanography researcher Ed Parnell led the first underwater study on the Yukon a few years after the ship's sinking. The artificial reef provides lots of structure for lots of uh, invertebrates and fish to live on. So it's kind of an interesting recreational area for divers, an important area for a recreational fishermen as well to target those, those species that they're after. Okay, Mike, here it is. The site is clearly marked on the surface, making it easy for fishing boats to drop anchor here. Parnell says that feeds a debate about whether fishing saps the potential impact artificial reefs have on fish populations. He also wonders about the long-term environmental impact of the ship. But as it slowly deteriorates, a lot of the metals, you know, the fouling paint that wasn't completely cleaned off of it, as well as the PCBs in the bulkheads, which like PCB doesn't break down, it's a legacy pollutant. Uh, the fate of those materials in that food web out there on the shelf is not known. It's not well studied. Parnell says he expects the Yukon to be part of the local landscape for decades. And he says tracking and recording the life around the ship will help scientists understand the vessel's impact over time. I gotcha. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.